Thanks, Sandy. Um, okay, so I'm going to share a little bit of my experience as a science ambassador, my journey, as is seen right there. So um, the favorite part of my presentation is when I talk about myself. So my name is Ellie. Um, I did a three-year degree in, uh, I have a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry, so I did some arts and science classes, um, and then I'm in my, currently in my second year of education, or going into my second year of education. So I completed my first one. Um, I did my first two years at St. Peter's College in Munster, it's a small town where I live, um, and then my, the rest of my education was here on campus. And I'll be doing my internship in the fall, just in a couple of weeks, or in a few days, I guess, in PA at Carlton Comprehensive High School. And I'll be teaching some uh, secondary high school classes in science. And this picture was taken in Black Lake when we decided to go for a walk, when everywhere else down south in Saskatoon, it was sunny, it was snowing, <laughs> and really cold. OK, so Black Lake is a community really far up north. I'm going to show this. So it's right there. It's really close to Stony Rapids. So we got to hang out with, we got to, we got to um, hang out with Mary and Gen while they were there. It was a lot of fun. So it's only like a 15 minute drive, I think. Um, Black Lake is a bigger community than Stony Rapids. Has anybody here ever been to Black Lake? Quite a few people. OK, so maybe you can help me out or back me up on some of these facts. So it's a Dene nation and a community. And there's a reserve. And their first language there is Dene. They speak English as well, though. But I think it's more a second language. It's a flying community on a little tiny plane. That's how we got up there. The population as of 2011 was around 1,000, but I think it has increased quite a bit. Um, does anybody know? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think it's a lot more. And there's uh, roughly 400 students at the school. Wow. And uh, there's a lot of culture there, too, so I'll be talking about that, that a little bit later as well. <coughs> um, the school is this building right there. It's a really big school. It has four separate wings, so it's kind of like a, like a star, like a starfish with only four arms, where there was one wing for kindergarten to grade three, a wing for grade threes and grade fours and fives, uh, a wing for grade six and seven, and a high school wing as well. And the high school wing has a computer lab and a home ec lab, so it's, there's quite a few resources available at the school. <coughs> okay, so some immediate friends we made, lots of dogs. Uh, we love dogs, it was really nice to have. This was our little guard dog here. We called her Buddy, and there were some little other dogs that always came and visited us. It was nice to have uh, some other friends, obviously some of the students, so we were building snowmen as well. And um, we lived in a house much like this. It's a mobile home, along with um, the other teachers there. And we had a little friend living with us. We called him Mr. Mouse, and we were very sad to have him go. Kind of missed him a little bit, but um, he really enjoyed that peanut butter on the spoon. Right there, when we caught him at night. Okay, <laughs> moving on. So some of the activities that we did with the uh, students that worked well, and I put in brackets curriculum because how we had set it up was we gave the teachers a list of the activities that we were ready to go with, and some of these activities included the sound unit where we made those flutes right there in the corner, um, a weather unit where we looked at tornadoes in a bottle and a fountain bottle, and we also did planets in the universe. So some uh, teachers had requested that, so that's why we um, came up with these ideas before we went out there, because like everybody else has already said, there's no Walmart, and there's no dollar store. So we packed our stuff that we needed. So we had this list ready to go, and we had a schedule, the principal uh, provided a schedule where teachers scheduled us in. And um, we didn't expect this, and I don't know why, but teachers were literally like fighting over us. And slots <laughs> were filled. It was crazy. So initially, we were just like, oh yeah, we'll put up a schedule and see what happens. Maybe we'll just end up roaming the hallways. But no, uh, yeah, we were scheduled in quite a bit. And we had to change that schedule because of a lot of other teachers who didn't get to schedule us in. So like I said, this worked well with the curriculum. kind of helped out some teachers. Um, it was a lot of fun to do. Some other stuff, and I put it back as fun, even though all of them were fun, were activities that were um, kind of like random, not necessarily pertaining to the curriculum, but um, teachers just kind of didn't use it as time fillers, but uh, just to provide some hands-on science activities for the kids. And uh, what we usually did was we did a little bit of a science talk in the beginning, so explain things, um, science stuff, and then we did hands-on activities. So like this, the magic milk, um, fossils, I think we have some fossils in the back. That's always a really big hit. Um, kids just absolutely love that. And we did some DNA stuff, turning pennies from silver to gold. That was great. Um, there was one classroom the grade sevens, they just kind of scheduled us in for all the, all the small stuff that we had going. And that was awesome because we got to teach them so much science stuff. 
that wasn't like school stuff. It was more like its, its uh, own thing, science thing. And um, there was another time where we were substituting for a math teacher. She was out of town, we didn't know that. And then we, were, we happened to be substituting and that was awesome because we got to interact with the students. Again, there weren't very many students in the high school. There's about, um, so same as somebody else had presented before, there's a lot of people that are enrolled, but then by the time that we get there, there's like five students left. So we got to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one interactions with them, um, with the math program and stuff like that. It was, that was really nice um, to clear up some stuff, just have some different people in there. And um, while we were doing that, we also used that classroom to make it our kind of open house for science. And that's uh, something that um, sticks in my memory, especially because that was nice because somebody just kind of picked up the kids that were roaming in the hallways and were like, hey, come in here. Uh, we'll do this. We'll set this on fire. And people were like, why does it smell like smoke? And it's like, oh, don't worry. It's, it's just us. And we were doing all these really cool random science things. And it's like, hey, did you know this? And we had the microscopes out and um, made some slime just all of our materials scrambled into the room. That was awesome. That worked really well. Kids loved that. Um, we also had a culture camp, so when I said that Black Lake is really cultural, they're very cultural, very spiritual. And um, we didn't get to experience too much of it because of other events that were happening at the time. But they did have this culture camp, and uh, there's people from Vancouver. I think this man right here, he was from Vancouver. And I got a really good shot of him. I think he was trying to imitate shooting a gun. Mm -hmm. And he was showing how to make tools, and the kids got to interact with that. There was also some beating. And um, we got to eat a lot, of, a lot of caribou meat. They had a lot of that stuff kicking around, so that was really awesome. That was a great first experience. <coughs> okay, so some of the challenges. This is the last thing that I'll talk about. Some of the challenges that we faced were, first of all, the language barrier. So their first language was Dene, and especially in the younger grades, when we were in the kindergarten, there was one time in the kindergarten grades where we were left alone and all of a sudden these kids were talking to us in a different language and we had no idea what they were talking about. And then they started running around in circles and then we got in trouble because uh, we didn't really know how to keep them from doing that. So that was a little <laughs> bit of a, of a barrier. And um, as well as with the high school students, when they, they tended to do a lot of chatting in their own language. So when they didn't get something that we were explaining in math, for example, they would kind of turn to the person next to them and talk in Dene and it's like, if you were talking to English, then I would know what your problem was, and then I could help you. So that was the thing. Um, as for culture, there was a lot of uh, unfortunate events happening at the time, where school was like always canceled. It was canceled quite a bit because of funerals and how they dealt with that kind of stuff. So very differently, very culturally, and as well as, um, like I said, that culture camp. That's always a thing. They're trying to preserve culture quite a bit there with um, caribou meat and eating and events that they organized there. Which leads me to talk about the school system, which was um, not as, it was not as much as priority, I feel, that, that as it is in here, or in southern Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan. Because like I said, a lot of times school was canceled for a spirituality walk or um, some other event, and it was really, really random and unorganized. As well as many of the programs were modified, and not very many people were graduating. So that was different, it was a little bit of a challenge, and it was kind of a mind blow when we got there, and it was weird. Another thing too, food it was very expensive, and I don't know how they, how they live up there buying a lot of food because it's expensive. And then the last thing I'm gonna talk about is just everything's different. So that ranged from the community to, um, like I said, everything is different. It was just a very new experience to be there. Even being so isolated, there was a lot of things that, uh, even how they just talked to each other. We found that me and my partner, Science Ambassador, partner Brianne, when we walked into the, school, in the, into the schools, we'd always say something like, oh, hey, how's it going? And they just, they wouldn't really say that. They would just kind of tell you what they wanted to tell you and then move on. So um, it was different in that sense. And I think that's all I have to say. Answering questions later? Good. <coughs> Okay, thank you. Oh, Eleanor!
Okay. No, we're still waiting. <laughs> the battery is in. It's okay, though. It's okay. Make sure you get a copy. Make sure you get a copy, okay? Yeah, sure. Good. Yep, okay? Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.